Uh, who are you? Hey, I'm Buzz Bruggeman. Hi, Robert. <laughs> Stop being so formal with me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm always formal with you. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, I'm happy you're here. You brought the nice weather. Yeah, we're here in Seattle, in Pioneer Square, Seattle. Let's see if the camera can pick that up. It's beautiful weather for for once. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I, uh, for those of us who live in Seattle, I call these weather amnesia days. Yeah. Because the weather is so spectacular that it kind of completely erases all your memory banks as to as to as to the bad weather we've had before. So, and we're anyway. we've been friends for a long time. We've been absolutely known each other for a long time. So who are you? Tell tell the audience who you are because I know who you are. Well, uh, my name is Buzz Brogham, and I'm a small town Minnesota boy. College in Iowa, law school in North Carolina. And my last year in law school, I took a year of programming, and that was back in the day of punch cards. So when I started practicing law. I began to think a lot about office automation and tools and technology and one day I walked into a computer store in Tampa and I bought an Apple II. And there really wasn't any software for the Apple II at the time and I thought grudgingly that I'm going to have to teach myself how to program this again. And, you know, I taught myself a little bit about programming. And then along the way I met a guy named Serge Beauregard who was one of the co-founders of ActiveWords with me. And Serge had this idea that said, you know, why don't computers understand us? And I always thought that that meant voice. And Serge's take was that it didn't have to mean voice. I mean, voice is very tricky, it's very problematic, and voice is something that you would only use about 3 or 4% of the time. You know, you wouldn't use voice in a meeting or an airplane or a classroom or, uh, you, know, in, 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 you know, in lots of places. So uh, Serge's thesis was that you should be able to type something in any app, anytime, anywhere, and have the computer understand it. Yeah. And so we built a product called ActiveWords. Yeah. And we've been shipping software now for 10, 12 years, and it's, it's totally fascinating to me. I've been keeping a running total, a running, a running list, if you will, of the last 200 people who have either downloaded our software or, or who have bought copies. And they're all over the world. Yeah. It's totally fascinating. In fact, one of my favorite stories is uh, a, a guy, a, law, a lawyer in Airdrie, Scotland, bought a copy of ActiveWorks. And I wrote him a note, and I said, uh, I'd really like to come and see you someday. You know, I'd buy you a beer and we could talk about technology. And he wrote me back and he said, don't you care about golf and scotch? Yep. And I thought, you know, I do like golf and I do like scotch. And it would be fun to go to uh, Scotland and, you know, talk about technology over 18 holes of golf and drinking scotch with one of your customers. So we've built active words. We've iterated, we've iterated, we've iterated. And we've never changed the UI UX from day one until now. Yeah. And our team started testing last fall uh, active words 2.0. And we were very guarded about that, about that appellation 2.0. Well, so, so a few things. I, first, very few of my, very few of my interviews are done with installable software. Correct. Other than iPad software, you know, right. which is still software, but it's a, it's a different thing. It's not for Windows or the Macintosh. Right. I, I very rarely uh, talk about this machine. Right. You know? And there's a bunch of reasons for that because it's usually not the bleeding edge. But who is who, Active Words is really a productivity enhancer. Who, who is it for? Well, what we so seem to be learning over and over and over again is that our customers are smart people who want to get things done. Yeah. Now, those interesting get things done is, 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 a, is a great example of a, of a significant group of our customers. And they're guys who've read David Allen's book, Getting Things Done. And if you haven't read it, which I think you have, you have to read it. I had a personal coach come out to my house and right. talk about that. Because what happens in the enterprise and in businesses and small and large businesses who are using computers, I mean, one, one of the goals is to get things done. Yep. Now, um, what's happening today, we've noticed, for example, is there's lots and lots and lots of documents on the web. Yep. But getting to that document, particularly, particularly in an environment where it's repetitive. Yep. I mean, if you have to uh, write a report. Um, we have a customer who told me recently that uh, our scripting language, which I'll talk about in a bit, uh, she dealt with um, no, Workday or uh, one of the, one of the big... Specify. Yeah, right. specify. One of those big um, you know, CRM-ish uh, uh, payroll, uh, uh, accounts payable management system yeah. would log her out every 15 minutes if she wasn't active. In that the sounds like Workday. I, I, we use Workday at uh, Rackspace. Yeah, in, in the environment. Yeah. So I helped her write a little active word script that she, was called pay. So anytime she typed the word pay, hit the space bar twice, 
she was back inside the app ready to do work. Yeah. This is as compared to reach for the mouse, wander around like a gerbil, go to the website, paste, you know, tape in the username, type in the password, you know, which is, you know, sort of has security implications other than the fact that her time was really valuable. And they'd made it hard. And she was a smart woman and she wanted to make it easy and she was doing again this repetitive task. And the people who were employing her were employing her because they wanted her to get things done, to be productive, and to accelerate information around. We've danced around a little bit. What, what does ActiveWords do? Okay. You, 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 so the elevator pitch around ActiveWords. Yeah. Um, we capture every keystroke before it gets to the operating system. And we look at that keystroke, and if you've told us that a letter, an acronym, or a word, or really up to 160 characters, does something, and in our world, it does one of seven things. It does text expansion, it launches apps, it navigates to websites, it opens docs, it opens files, folders, and drives, email, and scripting. Can we just see it work, just so we know, <laughs> sure. have some context of what it, so you have Windows 7 here. Yeah, I've got Windows we'll 7. We'll talk about Windows 8 later. I've got Windows 7 here, and we're in Notepad. So now, if I type R, it becomes Robert, and RS becomes Robert Scoble. Yep. In any app, anytime, anywhere, or date and time, or Buzz, or Buzz Bruggeman, or Active Words, or, um, or the Bill of Rights. So there's the first ten amendments to the Constitution. So basically the way our software works is you can trade a character for 6,000 words. Now, one of the hardest problems that we, we yeah. face is getting people to stop and think and wrap their eyes or their minds around what, is, what it is they do on a repetitive basis. So, I mean, I don't know how many, I know you type fast, but I don't know how many more times you want to type Robert or scobalizer at gmail.com yeah. or your cell phone number or all these things, which people do all over. Uh, if you go back to 19th century Italy, there was an economist philosopher whose name was Pareto. So Pareto's law says that we live in an 80-20 paradigm yeah. and we're doing the repetitive tasks over and over and over. Yeah. So later on this uh, fall, no, you know, I, I have the same kind of email response right. when somebody, uh, you know, asked me for how to get on the show. And I have the same, you know, cut and paste kind of uh, template, right? right? And there's there's some companies that are now just doing the email expansion, right? but you do a lot more. Yeah, we, did it, we do it everywhere. We do it in web forums. We do it any app, anytime, anywhere. But you use, you use the model of uh, web apps. Right. So there's a, there's a brilliant web app called Dropbox, right? Yep. So I'm in the middle now of this, of this document, and all of a sudden I have this revelation that I need to go to Dropbox. And I just type DB in the middle of the document, yep. and I'm inside Dropbox. So I would defy someone who's using Dropbox to get there faster, quicker, easier than we do. So we did the metrics, you know, and we see a number often in the tech space that $120,000 is the, is the FTE, full-time employee cost of an employee. Yeah. So that is worth a dollar, a dollar a minute. So our take is every time I save you a dollar, I save you a minute, we're putting a dollar into your employer, in employer's pocket. Yeah. And if you take a look at the competitive companies who are doing more, um, you know, we've been in and out while you've been here at, at, um, at uh, Techstars. Yeah. So one of the key guys behind Techstar is a guy named Brad Felt. Yep. Brad wrote a book called Do More Faster. Yep. Very successful book. Now what that's about is failing fast, shipping fast, doing things fast. And you know, there's lots of businesses out there that need to do more faster in order to be in the position to fail. And I find myself in the course of my you know, wanderings of asking people of, uh, as to whether or not they're tired of hitting their heads against the wall. Yeah. I mean, if they wanted to be at Excel, and they could type Excel in the middle of any app and Excel be open. So you're, you've built a new user interface, really. Right. So the argument Instead of going to start menu, going right. to programs, going to Excel, right. you just type X, the letter Excel, double space, and boom, it pops up. Yeah, it could be a single space, a double space, or hit How much the, does this cost, by the way? It's, it's $49.95, yeah. and we have site license pricing. And the irony of our business is no one has ever complained about the price 
And in fact, we've been advised by our customers that we're not charging enough. Yeah, because you save me time. And, and to me, I, I mean, you save me an hour. You, yeah. you save me more than fifty bucks. Right. Um, so you can launch apps. You can expand text. So you can have a like a template email response to some anything you, you know, want. Like if you're a customer search, I used to answer all the email at NEC, for instance, and it you know, sure. it was all the same. You know, sure. well, how do I get to the support department? Here's one answer. How, how do I pay? You know, how do I uh, get this? You know, this wh how, what's the price on the latest model coming out? You Absolutely. Know, well, what we've learned from our, what we've learned from our customers in the tech support business is that we've learned that the eighty twenty the eighty twenty paradigm is exactly what they encounter. They get the same eight hundred questions yep. asked in eighty different ways that only have twenty answers. So they could literally take those answers and call them one through twenty type 19, spit out the answer, and move on to the hard problems. Yep. And we're trying to give people back time so they can deal with the things that require focus and discipline and thinking and, and, and you know. And, and we're really clear on the fact that our customers, you know, for those of us, out, for companies out there that like to partner with us, one of the things that we've noticed is that um, the people who use active words are the leaders. They're the productivity leaders inside the company. They're the people that get more done. They're, they're, they're the thinkers. They're the influencers. They're, they're things like that. And those are the people who, who you want to hire because they're tired of doing stupid stuff. Yeah. You, know? you, you also, because I've used your stuff for a while, it, it does more advanced stuff. Yes. Uh, for instance, it can go into the subject line of an email and right. put somebody's email address. And then right. it yeah, can our go. Scripting, our, our email Tell me a little bit about what, what else it can do that's crazy. OK. So um, we have inside Active Words. Um, when you type the word "add" space space, you come up with you know the laundry list of the things we do. Yeah. Now, why are those things there? Because those are the things that people do all the time. And the last thing here is a scripting language. And that scripting language looks yeah kind of like HTML. It's not a complex scripting language. And what it's simply doing is it's letting you script anything you can do with a keyboard. Okay. And anytime your hands come off the keyboard, you are wasting time. When you reach for the mouse and you wander around like a gerbil and you look at things and stuff like that. So, you know, you just, and I find so often with modern computing, it's become a ready, fire, aim model. Explain what you mean. So I think about something I have to do. I know Tom I, Peters, but I, yeah. you got to remind my audience who Tom yeah. Peters is well, and what this the, ready. The, the ready fire aim <laughs> model is you think about something. You have this brain flash. You think about something you have to do. You, you know, you go to the desktop, and you look at all those icons on the desktop or all those icons on the start menu, yeah. and you think about the things that you have to do, and the clock is ticking, 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 ticking when you know that all you really want is to go, oh, let's get out of here. All you really want to do is go to Google. And now you're at Google. And people will say to me, uh, well, we'll be at Google as soon as the network brings it up. Yeah. And people will say to me, well, I always have Google open. And then I'll say, in which case, then you have to stop and stare at all the tabs across the top to try to remember which one is Google and where you are. Yeah. So, Ready fire, as compared to ready aim fire, where you say think, you know, act appropriately and get the result you want. Uh, I always tell a story about once upon a time giving a talk about active words, and a really nice woman coming up and saying, "Mr. Brugman, I'm so impressed with how you have automated the basic communications metaphor." What, what is that? And mean? I said, <laughs> "Fantastic!" I said, "I knew we had done something right," but I said, "I have no idea what that means." Yeah. And she said, it's how we live our lives. We have an impulse. We follow it with an utterance or an action seeking a predictable result. Yeah. So again, you know, we keep hearing over and over and over from our customers that they're tired of beating their head against the wall. They're tired of doing stupid repetitive tasks. They want to be more productive. They look around and they see their company, their job are in competitive environments and they need to get more stuff done to keep the job, to make the company productive, and it's, it's, it's a really it's a really tricky thing, 
I mean, we, you and I have a, a, a very good friend named David Allen. Yeah. You know, David Allen wrote this book called Getting Things Done, and he recently named us as his third favorite productivity tool, which is a huge honor to us and has driven business from all over the world. But what David's about, and Active Words is about a little bit, is getting people to modify their behavior and their habits to be productive. Yeah. Because these are the things that people do, and this is why it's important, and this is where the lift is. And, and all of a sudden, the game changes, and everything works the, Everything works in a way that they always thought it was going to work. And this gets to where I, I, I made an exception for you, partly because uh, you're my friend, but partly because it, it's such a cool idea. I wish it was more places. I'm on a Mac. This only runs on Windows, right? right? And I'm also on an iPad, and okay. this only runs on Windows. And I'm on a iPhone or an Android phone, and this only runs on Windows. And, right. and why? And, well, I, I know why. Cause sure. The software was built for Windows, and right. you're hooking into the keyboard uh, APIs and doing all sorts of magic stuff. No, that's absolutely right. And but Apple doesn't let you do that because Apple doesn't want you to put a new keyboard on the on the iPad. Yeah, you know, these tight little silos and stuff like that. You know, it's it's very interesting. You know, I made the argument the other day that. Uh, Ten years ago, you spent five thousand dollars, you got a computer. You know, five years ago, you spent three thousand dollars, and you got a lot better computer. Today, you spend three thousand dollars, and you get a, a good notebook, good desktop, uh, a, a great phone, and a tablet device. Now, you use all those devices in different ways, in different shapes, in different fashions. You don't write long emails on a phone. No, I do. <laughs> most people don't. You know, and most people don't write I've long... Ri I've written a 3,000 word blog post on my iPhone. Because <laughs> yeah. that's what you got. Yeah. Well, and if and, news and again, happens in front of you and all you got is an iPhone, you that's what you use. Yeah. And, and, and I respect that and yeah. I realize that. But, you know, by, but by extension, the people who yeah. are working and creating and drafting and, and, and you know, answering th questions and stuff like that are using... You know, there's one point... I think I was told the other day by Microsoft that there's... 1.6 billion copies of Windows in active daily use around the world. Yeah. I mean, it's a massive market. It's, it's way beyond the long tail. It's, it's you know, yeah. it's this, this massive monolith. You know, and are they under attack? Sure. And, you know, are, have there been, you know, do we on a daily basis, a eh, daily, weekly basis, get asked, why hasn't Microsoft bought, your, bought ActiveWorks? Yeah. You know, you guys, in a funny odd way, are a feature for Windows rather than a product standalone product. But as I think about this and I look around and I see how many companies get bought that have built products that are really features. Yeah. Instagram is really going to be a feature of, of Facebook, not a not a not a freestanding right. not a freestanding product. Right. You know, and, 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 and the list goes on and on and on. You know, the big fish big fish eat the little fish. Yeah. Um, having said that, you know, we've given a lot of thought to our product roadmap. And um, with ActiveWords 2.0, which is now uh, reflected by this floating icon yep. that floats around on the screen and can dock, you know, left, right, top, bottom. And if this were a touch-enabled device, I could touch that yep. with my finger. It would reveal what we call our ink pad, and you could ink an ActiveWord. So we thought through the touch idea. And um, we work very well in the desktop layer at Windows 8. Very well. We're very pleased, and we find Windows 8, even, even the you know the pre-shipping version, uh, to be a real quality product and uh, well thought out, fast, better battery life, all kinds of great things about it. Um, when at the metro layer level, which is this tile le level, which is going to run across all the Microsoft devices, which is going to unify the look and feel and the branding, uh, we think we have a solution to that, and you know we just need to work through how that's going to work. Yep. But in a perfect world. Um, and particularly if we found the right development partner. Uh, uh, Most of your work, though, is going to be in the desktop. Right. It's going to be in the non-metro, right. you right. know, on, on a uh, pro device, on, right. A, right. on a desktop computer or a laptop, you know. But, but you know. Because that's but, where PowerPoint's going to be in Excel and, you sure. know, Office and Photoshop and all that fun stuff. But right now, when you create an active word, it syncs to your profile on active words, on, yeah. on this computer. Um, you know, our product roadmap says the next version of Active Words is going to sync to the cloud, such that if I walked into a business and there was a Windows computer, I could download Active Words in a second, access my profile, and be off and running on any any Windows computer on the planet. Yep. If that works the way we think it works, then migrating.
first to Android because uh, architecture is so much more open. Yep. And then, you know, we'd love to buy them. We'd, we'd love to build a Mac version. I mean, my bet is the guys who are using Macs like, I mean, you know, we, get, we get daily requests for a Mac version. Yep. We just haven't found a Mac development partner that we're happy with or is happy with us. And so if there's a Mac developer out there who wants to talk to us, I'm buzz at activewords.com. You know, we'd love to interact. I'd almost, with I'd almost say something her heretical, which is switch, skip the Mac and go straight to Android and, and iPad. Yeah. Yeah. Because on a glass screen, I need this kind of scripting and this kind of productivity uh, tool much more than I need it on a keyboard machine, right? Oh, sure. Keep, Absolutely. Uh, uh, you know. Because this, you know, typing G and going to Google <laughs> makes you a lot more productive on a glass screen. Because oh, at really? least on a on a keyboard, you can type ninety words a minute. You, on a glass screen, a lot of people are struggling to get to ten or fifteen words a minute. Well, we've made um, we built Active Words in a way that we can make any character string, any word, any sentence in any app searchable. What does an Apple buy you? That's what I <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I, I've talked to Apple about five or six times, and at the end of every conversation, they offer to sell me a ticket to the worldwide developer uh, event. Yeah. And I'm thinking, no, 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 guys, we've already developed it. We've already built it. I mean, yeah. you need us. You know, I mean, we'd no, love you, to. We'd love to have you step up with a massive checkbook and, you know, and send me. To, you guys have uh, patents on this yeah, stuff. Yeah, so. yeah, we've got a bunch of patents, and on two or three, on, on two separate occasions, we've had patent trolls offer to uh, to buy our patents, and we've said that, nah, you know, they're they're not for sale. Um, what what else can you do? Go go into some of the scripting stuff because it, um, when people see what this thing does, they get really excited about. So you know, it's one thing just to to paste in an email that you have in a template. There's other systems that do that. The the scripting is really powerful. So the idea is, um, I'm in out of the blue. I get a uh, an email from somebody who says, "Do you have Rocky?" Barbonica's? Yeah. Barbonica's Barbonica, contact, yeah. Bar Barbonica contact info. My, my producer. Yeah. Robert's producer. So I'm inside Outlook. I've got Rocky's contact information, and I'd simply type FV to forward that as a V card. Yeah. Okay? So now what I have is a new Outlook email with a V card attached with a cursor in the subject line. Now, that functionality exists inside Outlook. But A, it's hard to find. B, it is uh, not intuitive. C, y you really have to have a good memory to remember something like Alt H F V. Yep. Okay? Alt H, -F or I, I don't remember that that's the sequence, but it's something like that. You have to have a brilliant memory as compared to active words, simply naming the script that says FV, forward as a V card, name it, and it's gone. Another example. Um, let's go to uh, Scobalizer. S S C O B L E I C E R. Okay? Yep. So I'm now at, um, uh, I'm going to be at scobalizer.com when it finally comes up. Yep. So here's an article, here's something you did the other day. Yep. And I look at this and I say, you know what? I want to share this with my team, right? Does that happen often? Yeah. Yep. Happens all the time. So I simply type S-E-N-D-L, which is coming out here. I hit the space bar, and that converts that into a link inside Outlook email. Yep. Ready to address. Now, can you get there another way? Sure. You can get there another way by typing alt F E L, yeah, Alt F E L. Yeah. And, you know, the reason why people name their children, name their dogs, name their, you know, their homes, name their things, is because, because when they utter that word or that name or whatever, you know, maybe the dog comes, maybe the child behaves, maybe something like that happens. And our thesis has always been that this is a personal computer. It's personal to me, it's unique to me, I've customized it, I've added, done things to it. it yep. It's really this very, very powerful tool. And if I want to communicate with the computer using my own language to be productive, to get things done, to get on with my life so I can focus on 
fun or life or important problems or work or things like that. You know, I don't think there's any product in the, you know, I'm very, very biased. Yeah. You know, I've been through what I call this active words odyssey, which is this almost Homeric journey. And I do not believe that there is a more powerful utility in the Windows world for people who desire to be productive and get things done. Now, and, how, how long does it, you're an expert at it, because you built a company. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> how, how long does it take a, an average user to get we productive we, with this? We find people, well, I, I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll, tell, I'll answer that way in two stories. Generally, generally speaking, we find people beginning to use our software within three to five minutes after they install. Okay. And I typically ask people to think about the seven to ten things they do on a repetitive basis and build from there. Yeah. Uh, the second, Open documents. Documents. Go, go to, to the letterhead. Go to the fax form. Go to, you know, go to this page. Go to HR manual. Go to all these things. Do their name. Do the, and we have also, um, you know, to, to really make things easy, we have built a whole series of what we call active words, add-ins, agents, and word bases that are com completely prescripted and ready to go, and they're free. And in, in, the, in this new version of active words, we make it very easy for you to share an active word. Yeah. That was something we didn't do well before. So now you can create one, you know, distribute it to your team. If yeah. somebody says, you know, what's our story on X? There's the story, you type X, and it, the text substitution is gone. So um, if time is important, you know, if your life is important, if getting your work done is important, you know, you know, I, I'd, I'd, love to, I'd love to hear from people out there that think there's a better product. Yeah. And we're very passionate about it. There's uh, a few other products, but they're not complete like this. They yeah. do some of the things or they do, you know. Yeah. Well, we, well, we looked on the Mac platform, for example. There's a lot of great products. There's um, Merlin, there's Quicksilver, there's Quick Keys, there's text expander, there's launchy. So to do what we do, you have to have all five of those, five different UIs. I don't even know what they, what they cost, but I, I think I once upon a time figured out it was like 250 bucks as compared to R50. They didn't have an enterprise license, we had an enterprise license. Um, or they may not, they didn't have at the time enterprise licenses, we had enterprise licenses. Um, I would match our tech support with anybody on the planet. And it was funny, when I was thinking about uh, the interview today, uh, you know, we dog food our stuff. Yep. We're the only company that I know of who couldn't run the company without the product that we built. And I, you know, most other companies can could run the company without the products that they build and sell. You know, we passionately believe in what we've done. We believe it's important. We believe that um, people's time is important. You know, our paradigm is that your time is important. Yep. It's important to you, your family, your friends, and it, and it, and it's not important to do stupid repetitive tasks over and over and over and over again. Yeah, it's one of the few products that actually makes me want to go back and use Windows. <laughs> Which, uh, you know, uh, Michael Dell keeps trying to get me back. He's, he gave me a, a XPS 13 machine that's running Windows 8. So yeah, I'm gonna... yeah, if Michael's out there, you know, you would never have to type Michael Dell again. It's MD, you know, and, uh, you know, I mean, again... And MD, to me, might mean, you know... Medical doctor. Yeah. But I mean, if he's tired of typing Michael Dell, but you know, it, it's really interesting. I I thought a lot about how when Microsoft went from DOS to Windows, they sort of bypassed the idea that you could name a DOS command. Because uh, when I was talking to Ed Lozowska, the chairman of the Department of Computer Science at the University of Washington, he said, "What's old is new again. What you guys are doing was something we did before." Not nearly as elegant, not nearly as powerful, not nearly as user-friendly. So what you've done is is radical. You know, you take an, an idea, you know, the command line, and you type something, and it magically happens. He said, I, it doesn't get any better than that. Yeah. He said, that's what... That's programmers what, could use this, by the way, right? right. They, they yeah, can, we have uh, lots of programmers to use this. Because, like, like, if you do a bubble sort, you know, you can turn that little algorithm into an active word, and it can spray that... that code into your editor. Yeah, right? well, I mean, we, we have people who do that kind of stuff all the time. Um, you, know, there's all, you know, there's all kinds of interesting use cases over and over. And we've got this terrific woman customer in New York who's on a mission to get David Pope to write about us in the New York Times. <laughs> she said, I, I cannot understand why he hasn't written about you. And I said, I said to her, writers write 
about products that their readers and their customers like. Yeah. You know, they're not as interested in writing about a product that the company is pitching them on. Yeah. They want to hear from the customer. So well, and, and we tend to go to where the, um, you know, let's be honest, where the readers are going to click on a, a link and come come and see us because, right. you know, does anybody want to read about Windows XP? No. Does everybody want to read about Windows 8? Yeah, yeah a little bit. Yeah. Does everybody want to read about the new iPhone? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we I mean, learned okay. this. That, you know, I mean, I took a picture of the iPhone 4 and it got 750,000 views. And nothing I've ever put but, on yeah. Flickr has gotten that many views other than Queen Rania. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, again, uh, you know, we have a 60-day trial. Yeah. If you need the trial to be extended, uh, let us know. We'll extend the trial. You want to talk to us about a site license? We'd be happy to talk to you. Um, are there questions about what we've done? You know, I, I, I once upon a time gave a talk, and I said, at ActiveWords, we build perfect software. Yeah. And I waited for everybody to laugh. Yeah. And nobody said anything. Yeah. And after the talk, a guy walked up to me and said, you know, I worked at IBM for 30 years, and I've always wanted to meet you. And I said, you have? And he said, yeah. He said, I've always wanted to meet the guy that built perfect software. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, ActiveWords is a work in process. It's going to get better. It's going to Dave improve. Weiner put it the, uh, went the opposite way, that everything he writes is crappy. <laughs> well, I mean, we have... And, uh, and with bugs. Yeah. We used to joke around, we write crappy software and with bugs. Or sh I think he actually said shitty <laughs> software with bugs. Well, uh, we have a mutual friend named David Weinberger, who was one of the guys who wrote the Clear Train Manifesto. Yeah. And he told me one day, he said... Active words do, does too much. Yeah. It's too powerful. And that's part, part of the problem. Yeah. Is it, it's, it, because the UI is invisible in Active Words, or it's barely visible, and now you put a little button up there, right. it's hard to know it's there. And for normal people, it's hard to understand the scope of it well, and what it can be. That's why I wanted to sit down with you again and get a refresher course now that I have a Windows 8 machine. So. Well, one of the things that we did inside ActiveWords to uh, prove the power of our idea is we say to our users, tell us how fast you type yeah. and tell us what your time's worth. Yeah. So I used to be a lawyer. I used to bill my time at $250 an hour. And in the last 328 days, on, on my notebook, which I use about 10% of the time, yep. I've saved $22,000 worth of time. Yep. We're the only piece of software that I've ever seen that can accurately monetize the benefit of the product to the user. Everybody else talks about stuff like that. We can show you, you know, real-time metrics. Yep. If that's important. I mean, I sometimes wonder what is important to people. You know, if time's important, if the only thing that you cannot buy, which is time, is important to you, I think we're default. That's awesome. Hey. Right. Where do I get it? Activewords.com. Yeah. And I'm buzz at activewords.com. And, you know, ping me. You know, there's no question that I won't, won't try to get you an answer, you know, almost in real time. Very cool. With Activewords. Thanks. It's awesome stuff. Thank Keep you, it up. Man. Come back to you again. <laughs>